Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Super Fantify. This being a show where we talk about TV shows of the supernatural, fantasy, and or science fictional genre. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Twin Peaks. A very good episode that's come with some new, interesting developments and more kind of like... Turning certain things I thought were a certain way into something else. Let me clarify that up. Like, a lot of this dealt with the whole Major Briggs situation. Now, I was under the impression he died kind of a little bit after the events of the original series and or, like, season two. But apparently, it's like, no, like, Major Briggs died, like, 25 years ago. So... I mean, they did, I mean, retros I think because in my brain, I was interpreting as Cooper left Twin Peaks, did his own thing, secretly came back and met with Briggs. That's what I interpreted as. But it's like, no, he died, like, Briggs died 25 years ago in that fire, at like a, a military base uh, fire or whatever. Uh, so, and that's when Cooper left immediately. It was probably like, Briggs was his last stop before leaving 25 years ago. Which it kind of puts that whole body situation into a different perspective, too. Because I was under the impression, it's like, oh, this is some weird Dougie situation, or that's actually Dougie's body. Because it's like, oh, this is the body of a 40-year-old man, yet it's actually showing Briggs' fingerprints. That's not possible, because Briggs would be, like, in his, like, at least 70s or whatever at this time. But it's like, no, because for whatever reason, that's Brick When Briggs didn't die in that fire like everyone thought like i guess it's a situation where his body they figured was so charred there's no way he could have survived so but that's why they still kind of been on the look like the military's been on the lookout for him because like oh maybe i mean it's not like the first time even amongst the show this isn't the first time briggs has gone miss quote unquote missing for a long period of time it's you know his wife kind of brought that up when he originally disappeared in like season two so there's that whole situation but it's like because I guess where whatever Briggs is doing, because basically we, we pick up more with William's story, uh, Matthew Lillard's character, and finding out about basically he was looking to do something called the Zone, which I can only assume is like the Black Lodge. Uh, but basically, him and Ruth were looking into that. The lady he's accused of killing, that he was having an affair with. I mean, then there's the whole like situation with his wife, and I mean, we already know that side of things. But um, they were looking into this other place, and then they met Major Briggs when they kind of crossed over into that place. He asked for dates, and like he would specifically coordinates because it seems like basically it seems like the Black Lodge can open up at certain points in time. Obviously, we know that already because of the whole situation of like because the whole thing in season two was like, oh, this is a map on these cave walls, kind of being like, hey, this is where when and where you know the certain things line up and the Black Lodge kind of reveals itself. So it seems like maybe we're kind of dealing with a, a very similar circumstance in that situation. But I guess whatever the case may be, because like, you know, you had uh, when you talk about the fact is dad, you know, I mean, maybe I misheard him, but it sounded like he was like, yeah, Briggs head floated away. But then like, you know, when he was in the, when um, Cooper was in the Black Lodge, he saw like when he heard, um, I think, Briggs was talking about Blue Rose, and in the moment he was saying that it was just his head showing, so maybe that was supposed to be kind of pulling back on that, and only his head was there, whatever the case may be, but that is his body, but I was under the impression that was Dougie's body, and kind of going along with that, it's like, it, it never, because it's one of those situations, I'm like, oh, but Dougie already existed, right, so how's this whole thing a situation, but then I thought, then they're like, oh yeah, Dougie just popped out of nowhere, because the cops are investigating, it's like, oh yeah, like, Dougie, his files don't start until, like, 12 years ago, when he got hired at the biz the insurance company he's currently working, I'm like, and I was like, oh yeah, that's 1997, I'm like, oh, right, that's like, well after everything went down with Cooper, I was like, right, 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 right. Of course, that would be the case. Like, so that, because I was wondering, like, how can someone that looks like Cooper have existed? How could that not have come up before? But it's like he popped up after Cooper was already in the lodge for like a couple years. Or, I mean, we already know he was supposed to be a plant anyway, but then it's like, why was he there when it was already Doppelganger Cooper running around? So, like, what was the point in that? Like, obviously, like, it was a trap and everything, but still not really clear on that. So, but then there's that. 
thing with Jane, because that kind of would clear up the whole Jamie situation. Cause I'm like, if there is a, like, so, because I was always wondering, was like, if there was another real Dougie, then why did, why would his wife not recognize that this Cooper, that's what I was thinking at some point in the more recent years, then uh, Dougie Cooper pop up and then Jamie and him got together. But it's like, oh, you've been married a long time. So I was like, I'm not understanding it. It's like, oh, the reason why is because he's been with, like, I mean, at least I'm interpreting it as like, this duck like that Dougie was with Janie for a long Jenny for a long time. So it's like I don't I don't know. Like I said, still confusing, but it's, it seems like certain things are kinda of clicking a bit. Like I said, a lot of it seems like it was just me misinterpreting a lot of things, but I'm I feel like I'm understanding things a little bit better. Um Kind of coinciding with a lot of stuff that went down with uh in Twin Peaks with uh the whole major Briggs situation is like uh William was talking about as he was lifting up, he was saying Cooper, Cooper. He said it twice, which connects to the whole note that Bobby received, like from that thing that he threw down and cracked open. It's like, oh yeah, there's some coordinates and stuff like that. And there's the message that says Cooper twice. Uh, obviously, Mimi is like, and then Hulk says himself to Cooper. So there, but also it's the same paper that Briggs had originally showed Cooper. I would assume, because I mean, this was all done around that same time, because this had to be the, the 25 years before he disappeared. Uh, so, probably like it, around season two, this had to be done. But the fact is that, because remember, he, like it's like, oh yeah, Cooper, let me show you. Like, we've been focusing on our satellites pointed towards the woods, and we've received some messages. There's all these random numbers, but then there's, here's your name, Cooper. Cooper. He had showed that to Cooper, so... Just kind of an interesting detail, but going back to it also, along with that same, that same situation, you had Bobby, Hulk, and Frank going to check on, um, going to talk to uh, Bobby's mom about the meeting between Briggs and uh, Cooper. But the moment before they could say anything, she's like, yeah, your dad, Bobby? 25 years ago, after that meeting, he's like, you guys, would, you guys three specifically, I didn't know which... Um, I didn't realize what uh, Sheriff Truman would be, but it's like you three would come visit me is what he said exactly. And for them, you to me to give them this once again, like what was up? Briggs was like something else entirely himself, not something else, but like of, of, of a nature of his own, because there was that whole situation where he disappeared for like that. What was it like? I don't think it was weeks. It was only like two days or something, but he came back in like almost like an Amelia. uh Earhart, like a uh, uh, attire, like a pilot, like old school pilot uh, outfit, and just kind of came back. We never really ever found out where he was during that time. Maybe that kind of correlates. That time he disappeared back in season two, and this whole situation now, maybe they kind of court. Maybe that's what that's referencing, like that time he disappeared. I don't, I don't know. But then he popped back up. So, then, then I start thinking, like, is this some whole time travel thing of like? Eventually, his body, it, like, it's some fool, I don't know, uh, it's, I'm going to confuse myself, I don't, maybe, I'm, I'm, I'm sure I'm overthinking it completely, but, like, this isn't the first time we've seen Briggs do that, because it's something, you know, like, Bobby experienced that in, you know, was that season, I think that was season two, part of the original series, or just referring to simply as season two, I keep bouncing back and forth between that, but nevertheless, like, Briggs had talked about this dream he had had about Bobby, that what Bobby would become and stuff like that, and that they embraced each other. And um, I mean, sadly, it seems like that never happened, considering the fact is a lot of things played out. But his mom kind of references it. She's like, hey, your dad was always, he knew what you would become. You know, who you were then is very different from the man who you are now. But the man who you are now is who your dad always knew you were going to be. He had faith in you, so... It does seem like Bobby's going to be in the middle of this because he's the one there that, because Briggs left messages only Bobby would be able to decipher. So it's basically coordinates and location, um, something that only Bobby would know that kind of help out with this whole situation. So, like, they're kind of throwing it out there already. Oh, two Coopers, two Coopers. Um, Diane continued to be the foul mouth shit. I love that. I hope that's how they always wanted her character to be. They always, because I like it because it's like, it doesn't seem like, you know, she's part of the FBI and everything. It's just, it just doesn't seem like that would necessarily be who she was. But it's like, just like, 
like Gordon, you know, gets to call about this whole like Briggs situation. It's like, oh, we gotta stop by South Dakota. And Diane's like, fuck you, Gordon. I want to go home. And then Albert looks at her, and she's like, before she says anything, he's like, I know, I know. Fuck you, Albert, and turns away. And then there's like at the morgue and everything. She's like, oh, I'm not going to see a dead body just early. I'm sorry, ma'am. You can't smoke. It's a fucking morgue. Fucking pansy. It's like, you're so foul mouthed, and I like it because it's n n in no shape or form did you ever think Diane would be like that. You just thought Diane was like, I don't know, at least the way Cooper kind of talked to her and everything, it makes you wonder, like, was she like, every time Cooper was like, oh yeah, can you send me something? Like, send me, uh, send me my earplugs because of the Icelanders. Weren't they Icelanders? The, the whole, uh, dealings that, um, Ben and Jerry were up to. Uh, but send me my earplugs, and it's like, was she just like, oh, fucking Cooper, always fucking asking me to do stuff like that. It's like, fuck is her favorite word, and I love it. Also, there's that whole little thing between Lucy and Andy I thought was kind of cute. They're going back and forth about the color of the chair. She wants beige, he wants red. She goes, I want beige. And he's like, you know what, honey? I'm sorry. We'll get the beige. And then she kind of smiles. I'm like, oh, I guess she won. And it's like, then she secretly turns it to red and then buys the chair. I guess the whole thing was just to kind of, it was, I guess in her eyes, it was the only way she'd really be able to find out exactly which one Andy won. Or maybe she started it all just to kind of make it like, oh, okay, I win. But secretly, this is my way of being like, okay, you're going to be so surprised when you see it because it's going to be what you wanted. So this is kind of interesting. I also appreciate the situation where Chad is like, yo, get, they're like, get your shit out of here, Chad, eating in a conference room. He's like, what? You eat donuts in here all the time? Get the hell out, Chad. Okay, fine. It's like, he's just standing there. It's like, can someone get the door for me? And Hulk's just standing there. I'm like, yeah, that's Hulk. Just kind of giving you the memphis, please. And he just opens the door. It's like, I'm surprised Hulk never bothered because it's like, Chad's such a douchebag. Ugh. Multiple times it's kind of shown that he's a douchebag. Also, there's that um, moment with Johnny Do. Uh... Ben's son, as you know, as well as um, Audrey's brother, uh, we see him kind of running and he slams his head into a wall and, and dies. It's like, wait, what? It's like, what was that supposed to rep? What's that supposed to represent? I'm wondering, is that supposed to be? I mean, this could be them setting it up once again. Like, we haven't heard anything about Audrey, so it's like maybe that's supposed to be the thing. Maybe Audrey left Twin Peaks, and now this is going because, like I said, it's maybe it's not even just about getting Cooper back to Twin Peaks. It's about getting ev all the players that are needed for everything. Get all the pieces lined up to kind of bring this all full circle and bring this all to a head. I guess so. Maybe Johnny's death is what's going to bring Audrey back. To, I mean, because the last time we talked, I mean, the doc and um, Frank kind of talked about it, about like how it's like, oh, she was in a coma because of the whole explosion. But it's like, is she like still in a coma is, or did she get out of the coma? That was never really answered. So because her fate, her whole situation is still up in the air. Maybe we'll find out she has been in a coma the entire time. Or maybe this is like, oh, she got out of the coma some time back and left town. Just too many memories and stuff like that. Nothing really left for her. And when she comes back, she's coming back for Johnny's funeral something like that so then speaking of like ben there's a whole thing with him and that lady Be beverly they're also he they hearing that sound and now that we dealt with that thing with bobby and them it seems like it was the same sound so is it supposed to be like another one of those things somewhere in the uh great northern hotel or something like that i don't know i'm kind of interpreting that and they're also doing the whole thing of like he's like i can't let nothing happen here and she's like oh you're a good man i guess like maybe it's kind of referencing the fact is that he stayed on that good path there's that whole thing season two of him trying to be a better man i mean we still don't know that out a hundred percent the i don't know how things between him and doc hayward are after like how things ended back in season two kind of revealing who he really was and everything and donna finding out the truth i mean we still haven't found out like where donna is and all of this either so so i mean i don't like i mean i'm assuming like he still tried to stay on that right path i mean it makes you wonder like or did that change his mind and make him kind of go back to being the kind of scummy um him that he's always been i mean you still haven't touched on the whole josie situation either like where we left her off at so I mean, there's still a lot left to explore this. Um, I've seen, like, ahead to a certain extent. I don't know how many episodes are actually up for this. I would assume, like, 20-something, uh, since season two was 20-something. But so far, the most I've seen up so far was, like, the numbers went up to 18. So at the very at somewhere 
we're co we're basically in the middle of the season, possibly depending on not whether or not it's twenty. We're roughly in the middle, whether it directly or just close enough. But we're somewhere in the middle of this whole situation. So also that weird thing with Jerry, where it's like his foot is like this is n I am not your foot. It's like is he is he tripping balls because he's like super duper high? It's just how I've been kind of interpreting it. And then there's that whole thing of like he's like I was like the way he was acting. I was like, is your foot stuck on a landmine or something? The way you're acting, and he grabs his foot and kind of trips himself and flips in the air a little bit. So I was like, what the hell is that all about? Or is there something out there kind of in the woods, kind of messing with Jerry's head and making him go a little nuts? Maybe it. Like I said, it's hard to see the connections of what's plot relative and what's not. Especially like the thing at the very end where it, those girls are talking and stuff. And one girl talks about being fired and she's like, oh, I, I work right across the street flipping burgers. So it's like, is that her referencing the fact is that she's working at the same um diner, you know, that um well Norma owns but Shelly works at? Is that what, she, that what she was referencing? Plus she's got this rash or something and they focus so much on that rash and I'm like, okay, what's, what's that all about? Uh... Dougie's wife wants to take Cooper to the doctor. Uh, there's a whole him staring at the American flag thing. I guess representing the fact is like, oh, him slightly remembering his his uh, due diligence and his pledge to his country. But then he's staring at the lady's red shoes, which I'm trying to understand what that's a reference to. I don't, I'm trying to remember. I don't think Laura red, wore red shoes. Did she? Is it a reference to Diana? I mean, not Diana. Diane. Uh, any, like, is it, what, what is that supposed to be referencing to, or maybe it's just supposed to be, like, bright red shoes they're catching or something, I, I don't know, maybe it's supposed to represent the dude in the red suit, uh, that he constantly see with Laura in the waiting room, you know, back in the, uh, when he'd had visions of the, um, well, the waiting room and stuff like that, I don't know. And also, you had those cops running his um his fingerprints. So obviously, that's gonna come back as him being Cooper. But then there's a whole like thing with like doppelganger Cooper. Um, that's probably gonna come back and blow back on him. But it's like, oh, obviously, because you know they're still under the impression like, oh, he must have been in, like in a witness protection or whatever. Um, are all three of those cops related? Because it was like the, the other cop has said one person's name and all three of them responded. So it's like, are all three of you brothers? That's kind of interesting. I love how there's that one who's always laughing, dude. That's crazy to me. It makes you laugh because of the fact that he just laughs at, it seems like, inappropriate times and stuff like that. There's also more, uh, a little bit more with the uh, assassin, assassin slash hitman. Uh, we end up, I think his name is Ike, the either Spike or Pike. I guess kind of makes sense with the whole uh, weapon situation he was kind of using. But then, like, the moment they catch him, he's like, oh. It's like that moment you kind of feel like, once again, it's like that moment of him just saying something. You're like, I kind of feel bad for you. I mean, yes, you're you're a hitman and everything, but it's just like a response. Like, oh, man, that sucks. Oh, G, G. Willikers, kind of like, oh. Like, it, just, it kind of makes you feel bad for him. Uh, that's the second time he's kind of made it sound like that. Like, oh, you kind of like, uh oh. I'm sorry, dude. I mean, this is what happens when you try to murder somebody. And fail epically at that, I might add. I wonder, was it Doppelganger Coop that sent him? I mean, does Doppelganger Coop even know about him? I mean, I assume this is all related, obviously, to the original, like, fate. I, I don't know. Maybe their lives are intertwined or something like that. I mean, all the Coopers. So even fake Dale Cooper. Maybe that was a situation. I don't. I don't know. I'm not going to speculate anymore. I'm kind of making my head hurt a little bit thinking about this. I'm thinking about it too much. Ugh. I don't think I've ever kind of been like that much about a showdown. I'm just like I'm thinking too much, and I'm like I need to shut my brain out because I, I I am thinking too much. I'm just curious who hired him and for what reason. I mean, I would assume this is all related to the whole Dougie, like, owing money situation because his car being tampered with the blow up, now this trying to kill, get him, like, kill him situation. And I brought up earlier Doppelganger Coop, and it's like, what about that whole situation with him and that dude, uh, Hutch? Uh, freaking Tim Roth. That, that kind of got me on guard. I was like, holy crap. It's like a basically it's like, yo, I need you to kill that warden, plus I need you to do two other jobs too. So I'm guessing he's like, cause he's like, after you deal with the warden, I need you to go after you know, Warden Murphy, the one that kind of let him out in the first place. Can't have any loose ends, I suppose. Uh, but it was also like I need you to go to Las Vegas. And there's that dude in Las Vegas who called in a guy 
Um, we they're the guys that we saw talking previously. Like I think it was in the first episode when we kind of saw Las Vegas. It's like they're doing something for Cooper. Don't know what he's like. Uh, it better be done the next time I call you. So I'm assuming like once they get that done, then Cooper's going to have them taken care of. So uh, don't know much about that situation. So like I said, a good episode, but it's just. Uh, it, like I said, it seems like some of the pieces are kind of fitting, but at the same time, it's still kind of like, wait, what? I, at the very least, I would honestly say, like, not saying last week's episode was terrible or anything, but like I said, I, I said it, then I'll say it again. Last week's episode, so much of that was open up to interpretation, I feel like, and now it's kind of like, uh, you got a little more clues to go on, so it's not as nearly like confusing as last week's episode. But honestly, I think that's all I want to talk about in this episode. Uh, I'm very interested to see uh, where we go next time. Um, what else this crazy ride has in store for us. But uh, until the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, little light to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.